Hi, welcome back to Cambridge Inside Out. I'm Judy Nathans. And I'm Robert Winters. And, and we're still talking about the city of Cambridge. Yes. Shocking. And some, <laughs> and some further things that so, happened at the city council meeting. Yeah. Uh, actually, let's say one thing. This is a relatively quick one, which is... Oh, yeah. Um, the um, yeah, the thing is, is uh, you know, so we know recreational marijuana is legal, though it's, you know, it's taken a while before the rollout of various uh, licenses uh, really and happens. And stores, we don't yeah. yet, we have some uh, medical marijuana dispensaries in Cambridge. Yeah, but, Revolutionary uh, which Clinic way out on Fawcett. Pr probably right. all of which will eventually be yeah. recreational as well. That's good. I like where it is. It's yeah. out there. I didn't even know it was right, there. Right, but yeah, we have one coming right into the heart of Central Square sure. uh, soon enough. Um, but anyway, one of the things that hadn't been, that, that the city council had to um, act on so the manager's agenda brought back a, an item that says, well, you have to adopt the state enabling legislation to enables you to enact a local tax uh, in addition to whatever the state seems to get. I think the state gets a cut, but you yes. get, there's also a local There's a lot of taxes well. on all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. so, um, and it, I think it was, I don't forget what the range of possibilities were. It might've been up to 3%. So, um, so the manager's recommendation was, no shock here, go for the 3%. Uh, of all uh, recreational, I think it's recreational, maybe it's all cannabis sales uh, at some of these dispensaries and um, pot shops and whatever you want to call them, right? Um, so when they open up, then money will be coming in and, and the city council unanimously said, sure, let's do that, right? Yeah. So when they arrive, then the city will start getting some revenue. One of the things I had made a, a comment in my usual snarky comments before the meeting, which is like, okay, they're going to do this, but you know, no earmarks, please. I mean, in other words, you feel that way about the short term I, you know, thing I'm, too, right? Because that's going to be a. You know, I, I have, I, you know, there's a problem, I think, just generally in terms of how mm. you do revenue uh, and mm. um, financing in cities where you start designating the money that comes from this source must go mm -hmm. to this and the money from this goes to that. It ties your hands. Mm -hmm. Of course, you could always change the law down the road, I suppose. But um, so there was recently a proposal, very well intentioned to support the arts in Central Square and oh, elsewhere. Right. Yeah. So they and said, well, let's... the cannabis funds. So let, well, well, also the short-term rental money too, I think. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And I thought, well, you know, the mm -hmm. thing is, there's a reason why they have a budget process. Yeah. The thing is, if you want to have money go toward the arts, you say, you, Mr. You City put Manager, in a budget request. please, right. we would like to see more funding mm -hmm. for the arts. And whether mm -hmm. the money comes from cannabis sales, yeah. short-term rentals, it or, should not matter. you know, or yeah. whatever, you know. I mean, there's certain things that money that under state law has to be designated for specific uses. Like, for example, if the city generates revenue through parking fines and violations. They can't throw that money in the general fund and just use it to spend it on whatever so they feel like. So it's used on traffic and parking. It has to be related. You have to make the connection. So the thing is, a lot of the bicycle infrastructure, infrastructure, they've made the case that they can use that oh, okay. uh, for that, that because sense. it's sort of road, yeah. road related, right? But if they wanted to sort of take the money from parking fines and drop it into the affordable housing trust, no. that would be a non-starter. You can't do it, right? So, uh, and same thing too with the fees that you, for resident permit parking, right? Then mm -hmm. that, those funds have to have yeah. at least some use related to that. Who would argue that. against that? There's really no, no basis of argument. Yeah. I mean, it's just, that's the state law. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, is that, um, you know, for the most part, revenue that is generated, like hotel motel taxes. Yeah, that, where does that go? Just goes into the general, general fund. fund. And then when yeah. the city, you know, passes its budget, yeah. You know, which covers school yeah. costs and everything, everything else the else. city likes to support. Yeah. Um, then there's just lots of revenue sources and then lots of expenditures. Yeah. So you're you just know, saying, you know, don't earmark it. You're right. tying the manager's hands, and, um, and in harder, fact, yeah. the future may shape up differently than you think how it should be. Well, today. I don't know if you saw it. I think it was in the Sunday Globe. There was a big article about the black market in marijuana versus all these stores and how some people are just still going to buy it because it's cheaper and it's accessible. Some you know, guy um, said I could go to Whole Foods and get my organic, but I've been eating McDonald's since I was a kid, and I'm still standing. You know, I'm, <laughs> so like, we'll we'll see quote. what the future holds. I don't know because maybe maybe the nickel bag pot emporium will open up someday. Who knows? <sighs> but for the most part, uh, the I it's think expensive. the tar the targeted clientele at most of these uh, recreational marijuana places are not 
the guy just trying to pick up a nickel bag. No, but it also, the, on the other side of it, to start one of these businesses, and that's another issue about, and then you get into social justice and who can run, there's so many taxes involved in this yeah. now that in order to get a successful business, you're going to have to have a lot of startup money and also charge a lot because there's so many expenses now if you're, when you're above board. Right, right. So, so most of these people, I think, are coming in with some backers. Maybe, they have maybe, big backers. And maybe you don't see who they are, but they're... I, I just found out about an organic farmer that is now working with the I swear to God. You know, I, so I always... I just, you know, people make, make this out as if this was all about marijuana. I always thought it was all about the money. <laughs> you know what I think it, well, it is? it is. I yeah, mean, it's just, it it's just another business opportunity it in another is. place. And it's, everybody wanted to get in on the ground floor. Yeah, well, you know? so that's beyond me, I just, I'm not sure I could even. So anyway, so, anyway you know, so when, that's their, when they you know arrive, their marks, right. it should go into the general, going funds. the general fund. I agree. Right, I know? agree with that. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we're going to have a situation where the people can say, well, we have to encourage them to build, put up more pot stores because we need the revenue. I we're allowed it, to have nine, I think, or eight or nine in yeah. the city. And I, it's already like, I think three is beyond yeah. too much. But yeah. that's me. Yeah. Now, another item that was part of an order from the previous week. Yeah. Uh, I think from Dennis Carlone, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Basically said that whenever somebody files seeking an upzoning. Oh, this is the upzoning. Yeah. Um, that in fact uh, the city should do an analysis of what additional value is basically they would get handed over, mm -hmm. you know, developable potential um, to the petitioner. In other words, so the city's giving we're giving you zoning to allow you to build bigger, more denser. Um, what's that worth to you? And then they kept making the point that well, during the Volpe rezoning, uh, which wasn't really rezoning, it was actually establishing zoning that didn't previously exist. Right, because we didn't own the property. Right, because it was federal. Yeah. Right. So the thing is, is that uh, uh, in doing that, it, Dennis Carlone and others have pointed out, I think correctly, that mm -hmm. in when you're sort of doing the bargaining about what community benefits, it would be nice. And this to is know. beyond linkage and inclusionary. More and yeah, more exactly. Right? Yeah. So, you know, it'd be good to know kind of, all right, how much benefit are you people really getting? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and, and that was made subject to the charter right by the mayor. Um, and then it came up again last night. And mm -hmm. Um, but with an amendment now, the, or a couple of amendments. Now, the, the crux of the amendments were this, is that the, the original order basically said, well, what, what, is, what are the benefits, financial benefits, that the petitioner is getting mm -hmm. by, get, if we grant them the upzoning? And then you, the city would then use that as sort of a bargaining point for mm -hmm. how much you got to give back to the city, right? Um, but I think Mark correctly pointed out that, in fact, sometimes when there's an upzoning that happens, for example, one that produced a fair amount of housing, including subsidized housing units, if the city views that as a benefit, right. or if, in fact, there is now additional tax revenue coming from the development mm -hmm. every year from now to the end of time, mm -hmm. that shouldn't that be factored into the analysis? Because yeah. well, the city may already be getting a substantial yeah. benefit. So is that right? now an amendment? Yeah, yeah. So then that would be made part of it. But I pointed out to Mark after the meeting, I said, well, you know, this it's interesting, kind of a one-way street thing here, because, you know, I've been around long enough to remember that there was all the rage back in the late 90s, mid-90s, late 90s, was down zoning petitions. You know, the Cambridge Residence for Growth Management was doing down zoning petitions. It never they happened did. to them, because it looks like it didn't work. No, it, no, no, no. Work? But that's the whole point, is that, in fact, <laughs> yeah. during that period, mm -hmm. the city council voted... Uh, a lot of down zoning, citywide down zonings. Really? That, yeah. And now the thing is, if if you have a provision now, which is what's being proposed here, that you're going to calculate how much value you're giving the developers by giving them an up zoning, then mm -hmm. it, it would be logically consistent mm -hmm. that if should we go into another period where there are down zonings, that you okay. should calculate how much financial potential is being taken away from the property mm -hmm. owner. By, by reducing what they can do on the, pro yeah. the site. And uh, so in other words, it's a two-way street. How often does a down zoning petition come up? Not lately, yeah. but part of the, re and I think it was Hugh Russell on the planning board pointed mm. this out, but others have as well, which is mm. that quite a few of the up zoning petitions like at Novartis and a few other um, kind of site, somewhat site specific, but yeah. not to the point of being spot zoning. Um, they were basically petitioning to get allowable height and density back 
that actually they previously oh, had down. before I see. the down zoning period happened. I see. So I, you know, that's yeah. kind of maybe purely an intellectual matter, but mm. the point is, is that, you know, if you basically down zone to take away potential, and then when you bring it back up, you say, now give us something. Mm -hmm. There, that's. But in fact, it's basically a zero-sum proposition. So you're saying some of these developers may look back at the history of this process. Well, they may look back at yeah. that, I think, yeah. is that it, but that's not a lot you can do. In fact, no. by the way, let's be clear that all this really does is, is ask for an analysis of what the financial benefit is. Right. It doesn't mandate anything. Right, it just says, it's just okay, useful it, it, information. in negotiation yeah. maybe with other right. stuff. But, but I would just argue that you know, whenever you change zoning to either allow more development potential or less, you are changing the value, you know, the value of the right. property. What can happen? And it's only for yeah, and, and developments more than fifty thousand square feet. Yeah, yeah, right. Things that are are fundamentally consequential. I think that's yeah. the threshold for things like traffic studies as well, oh, it and is. and design yeah. review and various other okay. things. You you know, it's for little itty bitties. You don't necessarily have to go through okay. all of that. You can do there are a lot of things you could just do as a right otherwise. So mm -hmm. um, anyway, I thought it was an interesting um, yes development. Not in the other so it'll probably take a while to get that back, I would suspect, because they really you know, have to do a um, financial kind I of assessment. I think Dennis Carlone pointed out that, yeah. you know, the thing is, is many people kind of know already currently, they say, well, if you want to develop in Kendall Square, it's worth X number of dollars per square foot. So if the zoning says this will give you an additional 100,000 square okay, foot of development, you, I see. So you just multiply this. it by whatever that figure is well, and then say, point. there you go. And so then they can look at, okay, what are you much. getting back for that? Or what are they giving you? What you, benefit are we getting yeah, for that upside? You'd, you'd have to factor in a few other things, sure. but I don't think it has necessarily. I mean, and honestly, it doesn't have to be that difficult. It doesn't right? also have to be superbly accurate down to the $10, right. you know? Right. I mean, it could be if you just, I think really what the council needs is a good ballpark estimate so that when they're getting into negotiations, right. they can say, well, it's kind of, this is the benefit or yeah. this is the not so benefit, you know, uh, yeah. for that. So. Anyway, I thought it was an interesting idea, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, and I hope it doesn't, it isn't just used or abused to basically say, well, we can't allow you big fat cat developers to build this thing here because mm -hmm. we're not going to, we think it's morally wrong that you should get benefit, mm. right? You know, my, in my kind of worldview about this, this should never be about quid pro quos anyway. Mm. The thing is, is that you should really be granting development potential at particular sites because you think it's fundamentally still a good idea to have density here and maybe not have density there. It shouldn't yeah. be based on how much you can get out of it, you know. Mm. I mean, it's a factor, but, you know, really, uh, good city planning shouldn't just be about the yeah. cash. So, mm. anyway, that's my wacky world. That brings me back to the infrastructure thing. I think it was a Steve Kaiser that brought up about by the if, way, Steve we, Kaiser has been quietly so generating some amazingly He's great a very histories, person, but and he sends me some yeah, of them, and really? I, I need to publish these or something. He's if he amazing. Doesn't get well, he's, he goes to the Cambridge Port, you know, the whole thing. Yeah, ninety. He's very knowledgeable yeah. about. But he mentioned something about if infrastructure was really a focus, we would have had a bridge in Alwife a long time ago. That's true. Yeah, no, it's yeah. just you know well, those kinds course, of things are important. Right. Of course, the know? big. But a long time ago, you would have had uh, a significant amount of the cost would have been covered by federal dollars and oh. that's the big difference between then and now oh that's to the so now more whenever you, money back yeah then. so yeah. whenever you talk about yeah. well, we want to bridge at alwif because it makes good sense from a planning yeah. point of view it and more, it does but it made even more sense back then right but the way you pay. do it now is you say okay the developers and the abutting properties have they it. have to kick right. in money so that we can get it because you have to generate the funding more locally because you can't count on the federal government right. to cover it so That's it's funny that difference. if the federal money was available, why it didn't go forward. Uh, for something like that, I don't know. I don't know the history of it. Well, I mean, the thing is, the bridge over the tracks at Alwife actually goes back to, I think, late 70s. So right, well, I know you had money, the 70s. Money existed then, but the yeah. thing is, they never really carried out the full, yeah. you know, the fish book. Plan. I don't think anyone saw ahead what was going to happen down there. Or maybe like they that. didn't think that the federal dollars were going to just go away, and then they well, did. That yeah. That's what I'm saying. We yeah. don't you look know? ahead. <laughs> That's true. It's Who true. We thought we'd have this president. Yeah. Actually, He's going to talk about infrastructure, supposedly. What tonight. is it? Oh, is tonight's State of the Union? Oh, gosh. Yeah, 9 o'clock. 
you know, I, and I then said, Stacey uh, Abrams when, is going to give the rebuttal. When, when the right? when the uh, presidential election came, okay, the following mm -hmm. one, I told this to everybody. I said, what? I said to myself, I'm just basically going to live perpendicular to Mr. Trump. So, I oh. often I often don't know what he has said. Or well, I know on. people who won't even listen to him, and I I cannot stand hearing him. But the the optics of this, because now you have Nancy Pelosi right behind him. Yeah. Because she's. Not, that people I know, are looking like forward to that. Political theater. It's right? political theater. Yeah. Right, so yeah. anyway, I'll, I'll, I'm going to uh, watch an old, an old movie. You're not I'm going to watch it? I'll probably watch Turner Classic Movies. Oh, you are yeah. such an old I'll read about it tomorrow. And then. You have cable now. You can watch a whole lot more than... You don't get I know. Turner that's the Classic. point. No, I have no, options. I no, no. I don't, you don't get that through your basic cable. Do I don't you? have basic cable. I have glorious cable now. Well, even extended, I don't think you can get Turner Classic. Right? Sure it's do. TCM? Yeah. All right. I gotta that's check what that I, out. I'm paying for it. What the heck? All right. Right? You only go around once in life. Yeah, so, that's why I get HBO. Um, by the way, just one quick note. Um, you know, the big hairy controversy about the honey locust trees in Volucci Plaza in the square. They're gone. Well, four are gone, right? Four are gone. Are left, yeah, and, and it, those you know, it's last. the uh, some people were griping because were they were there. Did no, you see them? No, but they they basically put a barrier around the whole thing. Mm -hmm. They had like. Uh, like a six whole, policemen, yeah. more than six. Well, all right, yeah, I just saw some photos. I on think the they emptied again. the police station out just to ring it, and then people were saying, like, all of this, you know, for a few little old ladies who were trying to put uh, 40 you people know, or something. yeah. And the thing is, well, the nobody tree, tied themselves to the tree. Well, but the so. point is, if they didn't put up the barricades, somebody I know, would have tied I know of at least to one person who that would have done that, yeah. guaranteed would have been tied yeah. to a tree, good point, or have been standing on the front of the boulders or so. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. so the city said, well, we don't want to do that, so we're going to do a little overkill, and they did. Yeah. So they, they prevented the, 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 you know, the, the conflict, and they took down the trees, and mm -hmm. uh, we'll see how it goes. I mean, uh, you know, ultimately, I thought the trees were a little bit of the, of the red herring in this, because they think the real issue is I also... I don't like the redesign. I just, I, well, that's the real issue, yeah, I and think. I, I, I feel uh, bad for the trees, but to me, it was more about the redesign. No, that's you how could I feel do something it differently, well. and yeah. it would have been better. But anyway, it is what it is, and it's going forward, so we just see what the future brings, you know. So, uh, by the way, uh, it is... Uh, um, I don't know, where do I... Where do I <laughs> it's Volucci Plaza... No, you, nobody's oh, going right. to be able to see these here, but I was going to oh. get a kick out of these things. We were just joking, uh, maybe somewhere, you know, this is actually what I'm holding here. Nobody can see it, right? Yeah. Maybe I'll try and put it so you can barely see it. Here, let me this go. Was I, back, can, I back, can walk over and put it closer. You did, want me to do that? Yeah, I don't know. You can give it a shot. But all right. I'm getting out of my the, seat. Yeah, which will probably put us all out, out of focus or something no, here. But, but Yeah, we'll see. But the thing is, is that, um, there we go. All right. <laughs> So anyway, what you see here uh, is barely uh, is a is a coin that was wow. actually made by um, Mayor Al Volucci. So uh, back when he was mayor, uh, it was around the time of the centennial Jesus. of the uh, city hall. Egotistical yeah, of him, I know, I know. But the thing is, that's what I loved about Al Volucci is is uh, how many were made? How many how many mayors would yeah. David Marr have fashioned a coin with his own picture on it? <laughs> would Denny Simmons have put his I, face? How many did he make? Uh, is this a collector's you item? You know, it is now a collector's item. You have two. Were they worth anything? Just a commemorative Some, coin, right? Somebody offered me twenty bucks for one of them the other oh, day. Oh, I would have taken it. No, I'm keeping it. Right. Yeah. So I actually have a joke. I'm gonna say we're gonna have a, the bidding has begun, you know, for my Al Volucci coins. When did yeah. he? When was his death? Do you remember? Um, I forget exactly when he passed when away. He it's been a while. Mayor, so. At least fif probably fifteen years ago now. Okay. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I remember when he was mayor. It was an well, interesting you've been character. Than I have, but I've been here since. Al, Al Volucci was uh, a character. He mm. wasn't always a great counselor. Sometimes right. he was a great counselor. Mm. Sometimes he was a great mayor. He was always funny as hell. Yes. All right. Uh, and he liked controversy. And oh, yeah. you know. And anyway. So anyway. So. So who was his um, heir apparent? Was it Toomey? Yes. So think there was a rule. I think it, I doubt whether it's true now, but yeah. politically, yeah. Just to delve into the political yes. briefly, it was kind of a rule that if you were in East Cambridge and there was your sitting councillor, you didn't run against the sitting councillor, and if you did, uh -huh. it was considered like a a pretty a really, hostile yeah. act. Okay. Some people did it right, but it wasn't really looked kindly mm -hmm. upon. So there was more of a succession. So Al Volucci, when he mm -hmm. left the council, that's when Tim Toomey was joining the council. Um, and I he think, was already a state rep at that point? No, he no, was not. that happened oh. later. So mm -hmm. um, I think there are some people believed, though it never happened, because 
Kim stayed, and he's still in the, still in the council yeah. today. Yeah. Um, that if at one point maybe he would move on into the state legislature, and then Joe Grassi, who was on the school committee, might be the heir apparent. Didn't he run? Um, Joe Grassi for school for his council. No, he just stayed on school committee. Oh. I don't think, but that's the point is that I don't think he would have run for council. Mike Connolly challenged. Tim but you know these are. But you know, and the then thing he is, then took the a state that, seat. Right, but the I thing is, there's a difference between yeah. having an East Cambridge address and being an East Cambridge candidate, right? He didn't so have an East Cambridge. Address. He had an East Cambridge address, but I don't think anybody in East Cambridge. No, no, I know that he represented a whole guy. different thing. But right. it is interesting how that all yeah. kind of gets. But the thing is, yeah. it's just the changing nature of the city. Is that mm. I think that that kind of. The depth of the neighborhood yes. loyalty of East Cambridge is probably not it's changed. Not what it mm -hmm. was. It's still there. So but who's not. the North Cambridge you kind of have? A well, once upon a time, it was is Tom Danahy, and then when Tom left the council, you know, there Danny, was Danny like Danny Park. Danahy Park was named wow. after Tom Danahy. The thing is that huh. it was like the big big question in 1993 hmm. when there were a lot of candidates, a bunch of them like George Spartacino, Jimmy McGrail. Uh, um, I was not Jim paying McSweeney, attention. Jim McSweeney, Anthony Galluccio, everybody was that vying for know. the Danny yeah, vote. Yeah, I see. You know, I mean, it's not like there was a succession, really, exactly. No, but then, it, where's it's, David Everybody Marr runs citywide. David Marr? He lives where's on David? Appleton Street. He's more That's West North Cambridge, Cam but it's, you know, Huron Village area. Yeah. But the thing is, there was a sort of a impl implication that the people who were loyal to certain people were... Right, would, would be you, the next. You move on to the next one, so... Yeah. You know, when Lenny Russell died, Sheila Russell was elected. Oh, sure. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, when Walter Sullivan left, well, Michael Sullivan it's, followed, it's, right? There's this family. Yeah. So there, there's there. kind of a yeah. tradition that has carried on. I don't think that it really works that way anymore. No. But there are a few parts of the city where at least it works a little bit that way. Right. And well, Cambridge also the whole, you know, them. whole white guy thing has sort of changed. <laughs> yeah. No, everything's different. Yeah, everything's it's absolutely different, different these days. Yeah. Uh, no question about it. So... Uh, there was one other thing that uh, I thought was worth mentioning. There was a committee report. Um, it was a, I don't know if oh, you went the, to this one. It was, no, a, it was a proposal uh, to sort youth, of. the youth, yeah. university. It was generated by a Harvard student. I actually, right. he, there was an attachment. Yeah. This now, I mean, I don't think I'm at all surprised that that idea would have floated because there was, yeah. in the last municipal election cycle, there were some graduate students who were proposing rezoning at Volpe. Right. They, Mr. Right. Connolly, the aforementioned Mr. Connolly, was very right. much sort of in cahoots with some of the yeah. graduate student reps at MIT, you know, to for, you know, mutually, uh -huh. mutual benefits, uh, I suppose. Yeah. You help my political career, yeah. I'll help push your agenda. Um, but the, so the thing is, is there are some people who are graduate students particularly, but not mm -hmm. always, not entirely, who were, to some degree, want to get sort of involved in affairs. I think some of the bike enthusiasts mm -hmm. um, certainly are coming from the, the um, either the university community or um, relatively recent graduates, right? Um, so anyway, there was this idea that we should have a commission, right, about <coughs> this. Uh, and I kind of like the idea of getting more of these people involved, but yeah. I, but I kind of was sort of wondering about. It. I said, well, what would the commission do? They would just sort of sit around and talk about themselves, <laughs> you know? It, it seems a little weird. It's like the, you know, you got a lot of people on the on the water board, yeah. you know, five members of the water board, and they talk about water. You know, if you're on the planning board, you talk about planning. You know, you, you know, the notion that you just talk about yourself is a little weird. So there were a few people on the council last night who seemed to be maybe implicitly acknowledging that that silliness by saying, you know, maybe what we really need to do is just do a lot more effective outreach mm -hmm. to people get, who are younger, younger to get on some to get of on these other boards. boards. Yeah. And I don't know the fellow's name, but he spoke at public comment recently. He's a kid. He's like 12 or 13 years old. Oh. And he's been coming to the city council meetings. <laughs> Um, so he said he's actually applied to be on, on two different city boards. He hasn't been selected. I don't know. I think there well, should maybe, be an age limit. Maybe sorry. Thir but there is no age limit. Well, there should be. I'm sorry. I don't want to sit look, in but, a group with a 13-year-old. No. <laughs> Listen, if you uh -huh. have an advisory committee that has 20 members, yeah, I don't think it's a problem. In fact, we actually have the, the what is it called, the youth, you used to call it the Kids Council. Now it's got a different name. Yeah. But that has kids on it. But it's because it's, it's called the kids, kids council, council, Robert. Right. I Jeez. know, I know. I, know. I, I don't want to hear about. I, don't, look, to, I mean, they could have an. There's public comment. You can I, come to public comment, I agree. but to sit on a board, 
I don't know. It's like you might. It's like one a woman All that right. has to sit on a board of twelve men. It's All the right. same kind of. But you might have a seventeen-year-old. That's say. different than thirteen. I agree. Okay. Okay. I'll go with. All the right. So we, we tell this kid he's got to wait a couple of years. Yeah. All right. Okay. But the thing is, is I don't think it's all that crazy that we actually have some no. people who are quite young, maybe not grade school. Young, I would like them to be a high schooler, or well, yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree, and I think that would be a good thing. And you know, we're not necessarily putting them into onto regulatory boards. Where as they long have as their parents decisions. aren't coaching them. Yeah, well, the that time. would be really dreadful. The hovering if that parent were true. that's really yeah, they're like a know, proxy for the, the parent. The civic helicopter parent. Oh God. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> acting surreptitiously through their child, right? Oh my God. Yeah. But, um, but yeah. you know, it, it did occur to me that, you know, maybe what we really need to do is to, um, is to create another board or two that actually oh, would be a really thing? good <laughs> opportunity for people of a certain age to sort of do things. So I was, I was just sort of joking yeah. around. I said, maybe yeah. what we need is like the board of fun. Yeah, board you of know? fun. Yeah. You know, people down at MIT planners, they know me. I'm always saying like, well, where are you going to put the miniature golf course, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or where are you going to put the batting cages? And, you know, I have to tell you, you know, whether you're looking at City Council, I think it was at Council Mallon actually suggested doing some fun games in front of City Hall. But didn't we do that? Didn't they yeah. set that up once? Yeah, or? and the Arts Council. We do that. The Arts Council does do some think, of this, I think. Well, you yeah. don't go to Roxy's in the back room there, where they have all kinds of like. That's like, true. You, That's you don't true. do that. It's very loud. But there are youth do I've find these places. I have you, been there. You've gone in the back. Oh room? yeah, I've been in there. Yeah, sure. Isn't it loud? Yeah, yeah. But and I what been, is it? I've just made? Is it mainly pinball machines? Yeah. But I'm I'm, yeah. I'm talking about some other fun, fun things. And I was actually right. thinking about. Remember a few years ago when they were promoting pedestrian stuff and walking, Henrietta Davis. Yeah. They had this whole campaign about the golden shoes. Oh, right. So yeah. where everybody, they hid shoes oh, around right. the city. Oh, right, like a scavenger. So that's yeah. what we need to do. Okay. We need a board well, that does it, that creates games. Yeah, but somehow I keep thinking we have a commission or board or, or community group that does that, don't we? I don't know if we do. Well, Central Square Business so that's Association my idea. could do something like that. I agree. I agree. But we yeah. need more fun in this city. How about the arts task force? Course. Well, the arts can help out here. So. Yeah, the arts can Anyway, we'll talk oh, about this important over. issue in there the future. All so, right. See you next time on Inside Out. Bye.